else on the deferral? I will then call the question. Those in favor of the motion to defer it for one year, those in favor? One, two, those opposed? Deferral is defeated. <laughs> Back to the original motion. Councillor Geisens, go ahead. And, uh, it relates to what Councillor Sonnenberg just said a while ago, to make that you've got to put a foundation under one of those containers is totally, basically you can put them on four or six pads depending on the size of the, uh, of the container, but to make somebody put in a foundation for this is to me totally useless. So theoretically, they're not going to blow away, a, uh, and a, an earthquake probably won't even shake them out of there, but uh, I, I would suggest that uh, some type of a um, slabs underneath that uh, will do it uh, rather than a foundation. So I'm not so sure that, uh, I don't know whether staff will have some suggestion, but uh, I'm, gonna, I'm making that a motion. Thank you. Okay, so you're amending the motion to say no foundation and that's for not just a temporary one, that's for one that's permanently there, correct? I gonna, if I may, before I accept that amendment, is the building code dictating that foundation? The Ontario Building Code? Three, Mr. Mayor, it is, uh, which would trump in terms of the bylaw. So unfortunately, that isn't something that we can include as per the zoning. It uh, would be an item that is dealt with through the Ontario Building Code. What are you thinking about that amendment, Councillor Geisens? Give me, give, me, give me direction here. Are you still moving that amendment? No, no, I, are you? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, well, I still have a motion here. Um, and I would uh, entertain any uh, speakers to the motion. Councillor Brunton, please. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Um, I heard this right. We are only going to enforce by bylaw, correct? <clears throat> by complaint, sorry. Through you, Mr. Chair, that is correct. Uh, so does that mean that the building department, separate from the bylaw department, will only act, act on complaints? Uh, through you, Mr. Chair, uh, if there is a complaint received through our um, bylaw division or bylaw department in terms of a shipping container on a property, they would have to follow up with that and potentially involve the building department because of the requirements uh, for placement. Um, but otherwise, uh, neither department would be going out and looking for shipping containers in violation uh, of the bylaw. They would just. Uh, it would only be it would only come up in terms if there was a complaint received specifically on a property. So it depends who answers the phone, the building department or the bylaw department. Is that what you're saying? That's the way I interpret it. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, all staff Norfolk County, it's only bylaw complaint. Okay, thank you. And just to, to clarify, it doesn't matter if, if the. Um, Building is built out of wood, metal, gold. It has to follow the Ontario Building Code requirements, and, and so does as you can. Complaints. That's what we got to deal with, right? Thank you. Let's vote on the motion. Um, <clears throat> it's exactly as printed on page 71 of your agenda, and Councillor Black has added that a residential property located in the CBD district not be allowed to have a container. Any further discussion? Call the question. Those in favor? One, two, three, four, five, six. Those opposed? Two. That is carried. I'm going to go to staff report DCS 17 31. An application has been received to amend. The Norfolk County Zoning Bylaw on a site-specific basis to add a lumber yard and building supply establishment and resale of used household goods as an additional permitted use in the general industrial zone. The subject lands are designated 
Industrial Business Park and the Norfolk County Official Plan, Habitat for Humanity Brand Norfolk <coughs> has put forth the application affecting lands described as 29 Park Road Simcoe. I will now open the public meeting on DCS 17-31. Kayla, welcome. I'll turn it over to you. Thank you. This is an application to amend the zoning bylaw on a site-specific basis to add the lumber yard and building supply establishment and resale of used household goods to the MG zone. The lands are located at 29 Park Road and are approximately 2.92 acres in size. There is an existing vacant building which was formerly uh, used as a bingo hall. It should be noted that the subject lands are located within the source water protection area and so this application was reviewed by the risk management official from Cambrium. A section 59 notice which permits the zoning bylaw to move forward um, for consideration has been received and is attached to the planning report. The lands are designated industrial business um, park and the proposed restore business is considered appropriate within the designation as it is largely based around receiving donations and the sale of used household goods and building supplies. It should be noted that several other sites were considered and specifically the downtown um, Simcoe, but because it's largely based around pickups and drop-offs, the subject lands, including the existing vacant building um, with ample space for loading and parking, were chosen over the downtown sites. The lands are zoned general industrial in the zoning bylaw and have an existing site specific um, which permits a bingo hall, place of assembly and special events including an auction center. Although the proposed restore business does not fit with the existing zoning, the business is very similar and compatible with other uses permitted. It does not involve ex excess noise, odor or large traffic which is common in industrial zones. Planning staff are satisfied that the proposed development represents economic development with, within Simcoe's employment lands and is consistent with the PPS and the Norfolk County Official Plan, and therefore staff recommend approval of this application. Thank you. Questions from members of council? Councillor Wells. Uh, you're recommending a lumber yard be part of this application. Do they not produce a curtain so close to the water system? That's the only question I had. Uh, through the mayor, the lumber yard and building supply establishment is a defined term in the zoning bylaw and meets the intent of the restore business, and that's why it was chosen. And the review from Cambrium had indicated that um, no hazardous uh, materials can be stored on that site, and the applicants have confirmed they are aware of those conditions. And who would check that? I mean, it's all right to say this in the book, but who's going to check to see whether or not they are complying? Through the mayor, the response from the risk management official does indicate that there, they would have site inspections. I believe it'll be on a yearly basis. Thank you, Councillor Oliver. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. My only question to staff is in relating to adjacent properties. I know to the to the south, I think there isn't any. There's, there's some wooded area that will serve as a buffer. To the north, there is the insurance building. And, and do we have the right, uh, as the county, to impose? Is, is this subject to site plan? I'm sorry if I missed it in the report. So we could require some <coughs> privacy fencing or something along the north boundary line? Through the mayor, the subject lands are subject to site plan okay. control. Um, there is no new structures or um, sort of development um, that would require a site plan at this time, but you are correct that if um, changes are made, that site plan would be um, applicable. Mr. Mayor, I'm just thinking in the context of, of stacks of lumber, which obviously likely would be stored outside and might be somewhat unsightly to an adjacent property. So as long as we have that ability, and if there were complaints from an adjacent property, staff could impose that, I suppose. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? Is the applicant or agent in attendance? I'll be right with you, sir. How are you doing? Can't remember your name and I'm embarrassed. Steve, thank you. Okay, is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in support of the amendment, Steve? <laughs> I, have to, I have to read this, folks. It's called protocol. 
it's the law. Welcome, Steve. My apologies for getting your name. I knew you weren't Mr. Brooks. That I did know. <laughs> is that a fair statement? That's a fair you statement. You don't make that kind of money, do you? No, no. And neither Mr. do Brooks I. Is... <laughs> I know Mr. Brooks is over there. Okay, Steve, thank you. No problem. Thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity here. I uh, fully support the, uh, the staff report here. Um, as, as mentioned, there was the issue of the wellhead protection area, and we're fully aware of that, and we're going to have processes in place to deal with it. Um, on an ongoing basis that none of those materials will be stored on site. Uh, furthermore, as far as outside storage, the, the term lumberyard, as I said, it was a defined term within the, bill, or the zoning bylaw. There's no intention on storing materials outside, uh, and if there was, that would be a further application for us to deal with. So currently it will all be basically a retail store inside of the building, so um, should be fairly uh, innocuous from that perspective. Um, but anyway, I'll introduce myself. My name is Stephen Rorda. I'm the chair, board chair for Habitat for Humanity Brant Norfolk. Uh, I've got Dan Brooks, our CEO, with me here. If there was any other specific questions that you had. Um, uh, mainly, I just want to take a couple minutes of your time to express our thanks. Uh, we've uh, come into the community not that long ago, and we've had a lot of support. It's been very... Um, very good to hear from uh, uh, Mayor, uh, Mary Luke and all the councillors. The staff have been very supportive, and the community in general has been very good to uh, lend its support. The community groups and everybody has uh, the home builders. They've all been good to help us build our first home locally. Uh, the success of that home has allowed us to add Norfolk County to our area. It was just previously, it was Habitat for Humanity Brant, now it's Habitat for Humanity Brant Norfolk. And we have no intention on leaving this area and keeping it as a, you know, a focus of our, uh, our, of our uh, affiliate. Um, and a big part of that is establishing the ReStore because the ReStore helps us generate a lot of funds in order for us to um, do all of the background work. As you know, the whole, anything to do with development and housing gets more and more expensive as you go. I've been in the business for 25 years, and yes, it's not uh, getting any easier to go through that. So all of the support from the ReStore and all the monies from that side of things, all the donations we get and the monies we earn go back into supporting the affiliate. We still need the donations of time and energy and all the uh, other materials for our builds as we go forward. Uh, and w right now, with the focusing on the restore, getting that established, we're looking to uh, also f acquire additional lands in order to f uh, further our, our uh, mission of providing that affordable housing for uh, those pe people in need. Um, and again, it's, I'm not sure if you know of how our process works, but generally, the, um, it's not like we do not give them the house. They have a mortgage. They pay us on a geared-to-income uh, basis so that... This makes it affordable. The down payment is basically all of the do donations and everything else that uh, is provided by the community and, and, uh, and all of that. So we, can, um, so we can build those houses on an affordable way that we can give them that mortgage that they can afford to pay, that they can move out of whatever conditions they're in into a, a better their own home and start establishing that, uh, those roots in the community. So that, that's really what I wanted to speak to, just a big thank you. To everybody uh, here in Norfolk and the councillors, the staff have been wonderfully supportive, and the entire community in general. Thanks. Thank you. Questions on this application to Steve, Councillor Black. <clears throat> wow, good to see Steve again. And uh, was down at the opening of your one on Patterson Street, and uh, I can tell Steve's a really nice guy. And uh, I just wondered, Steve, when is your? Do you have another project set up? Uh, in Simcoe, like ready to go, or are you working on anything? We we are looking at properties right now. Um, we, you know, being a small affiliate, we have to focus on certain things at certain times. Opening a restore is very big for us. That's the important thing we're trying to do right now. We're also looking at land. Dan has been tasked to try and find us more additional land. It's not easy. It's not cheap. It's, uh, it takes a lot of work and some effort and uh, a lot of support in order to get there, but we are looking. And if there's anybody that has a piece of land you want to donate, feel free. <laughs> I'm, I would like to talk about Park Road application. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry. I don't mean to cut it short, but <clears throat> I'd like to talk, talk about Park Road application. Uh, any more questions for Steve from Council? Thank you, and thank you for your kind words. No, thank you. Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak in support of the application? 
Is there anyone present who wishes to speak in opposition or general to the application? Anything further from council to the application? I need a mover and seconder. <clears throat> I have guidance and height that we do close this public meeting. Those in favor? It is now closed. I'm looking for direction from Councillor Black, please. Uh, I'd be pleased to move the recommendation in the, the report <coughs> and speak to it if I need a seconder. I will need a seconder, then I'll allow you to speak. Sonnenberg has seconded. Go ahead, Councillor Black. Well, to the my, my, motion. Apo my apologies, Mayor No, no, Luke. that's uh, fine. That's fine. I just uh, fine. I was overly enthusiastic about uh, Steve and, and their, their projects, but certainly I support this be, because of what Steve said. I think it's a, it's a great contribution to affordable housing in our area. This, as Steve said, uh, supports that affordable housing. I like uh, this type of uh, affordable housing because it does involve the people that will uh, buy the properties. They, they, they put in their own sweat equity and they, um, they end up paying the, the mortgage off, which is affordable. And this facility, hopefully, will support many more, many more of those projects in our area. Thank you. Anything further? Councillor Oliver, please. Thank you, Mr. <coughs> Mayor. I certainly will report, uh, support this. And I think it's worth noting Steve didn't do it, and he could have. But uh, the report does tell us that there will be two full-time jobs potentially created with this property and, and part-time employment for residents of the county as well. So... That's another reason why I think it's good to have this vacant building uh, repurposed. Anything else to the motion? <clears throat> Black has moved, Sonnenberg has seconded, that the application by Habitat for Humanity, which affects the lands described as Concession 14, Part Lot 3 in the urban area of Simcoe, Norfolk County. This is to amend 1Z2014 zoning bylaw, be approved for reasons set out in the report. And I think... Uh, people out there that don't know what concession 14 part lot 3 is uh, it's the chances building on Park Road uh, north of just north of Simcoe Highway 3 those in favor of the motion <clears throat> carried thank you you can come in okay <clears throat> and our final this evening, under the public meeting, uh, this is uh, recommendations for cancellation, reduction, or refunding of taxes under Section 357, 358, and 359 of the Municipal Act. I now open the public meeting on FS 17-11. Now, this was placed tonight and approved to go on as 5E. It's somewhere there on your table. Um, it's white, and it says recommendations of cancellation at the top. James Johnson, I would like you to give the report, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a routine report that's presented to Council on a regular basis. This is the first uh, report for 2017 uh, related to Sections 357, 358, and 359 of the Municipal Act. Section 357 of the Act provides that upon recommendation of the Treasurer, Council may cancel, reduce, or refund taxes levied on land upon application by the property owners. Section 358 of the Act provides that applicants may apply for a reduction in taxes levied on land as the result of a gross or manifest error in the presentation of the assessment. Uh, this would be MPAC. Section 359 of the Act provides that the Treasurer may make application if a undercharge is caused by a gross or manifest error as well. If there's any questions by Council, uh, I'd be very happy to answer Questions uh, to this gentleman? Mr. Johnson from Council. Is there anyone in attendance who wishes to speak to this report? <clears throat> anything else from Council, or should I say anything from Council? I will need a mover and seconder to close this public meeting. Councillor Wells, and seconded by <clears throat> Councillor Oliver. Those in favor? This public meeting is now closed. Your wishes, Council <clears throat> Brunton, please. Moved by Brunton. Do I have a seconder? Oliver has seconded that this report, 1711, 
for cancellation, reduction, refunding of taxes under section 357, 358, and 359 of the Municipal Act be received as information and that we do approve these cancellations, reduction, and refunding of taxes as set out in report FS 1711 discussion. Those in favor? <clears throat> That's carried. Okay, gentlemen, that concludes our public meeting. Thank you. That was a lengthy one. Uh, I'm looking at the time. We have 22 minutes till we have to vacate, <clears throat> unless you wish to go further. <clears throat> I uh, have uh, been getting direction from staff that we can leave the in-camera till next week. So here's what I propose. I suggest we have a 10-minute recess. If you need more, tell me. But I'm looking at the hour. We need to do, <clears throat> first of all, I would suggest when we come back in 10 minutes that we go right to the committee in council and committee meeting dated March 21st last week because of the resolution 16 that is pulled on the condominium garbage pickup. Councillor Wells. Mayor, I wonder why we don't deal with those now and, and they are here waiting for that and then have our break. That would be my recommendation. And I will get back to you and then I also want to inform you that the drinking water summary report, which is item 4B, should be dealt with tonight. And it's important that we go to item 4D, staff report 1714, as you are aware, April 4th and 5th is next Tuesday, Wednesday. One of the conferences is dated for those two days, one week hence. So we can either have a quick break now, uh, and I know I need one, but I am willing to wait, but I don't know whether, how long that's going to take. Show of hands that wish to break now for 10 minutes. One, two, three. And I want to continue and then break. Okay, we will go <clears throat> right now. <coughs> Excuse me. We will go to, thank you, Councillor Wells. I wasn't disagreeing with you. I was just thinking my idea was better than yours. But obviously, obviously it wasn't. <clears throat> Reports of committees. I'm on page 129 <clears throat> of your agenda. It has been moved by Councillor Brunton, seconded by Councillor Height, that the committee and council and committee minutes dated March the 21st be approved as presented with the exception of resolution number 16, which is pulled for further discussion. Any discussion on this motion? Everything but 16 from last week. Those in favor? Carried. <clears throat> it has been moved by Councillor Height and seconded by Councillor Oliver that resolution number 16, Council Committee meeting of March 21st, 17, which goes <clears throat> that report PW 1709, waste and recycling collection at condominium corporations be received as information. <clears throat> Excuse me, and that the following options for service provision respecting waste management at condominium corporations, these are options 3A and 4, be approved for implementation subject to applications made by the condominium corporations and approved by Norfolk County staff. And further, that the waste management bylaw number 2013-164 be amended accordingly. It is open for discussion. Councillor Black. Thank you, Mayor Luke, and uh, I think I pretty well had my, uh, said my piece last, last week, but just see if I can make a shorter version of it. I will not support the motion, and my reason for not supporting it is that condominiums do enter into an agreement uh, with open eyes. They know what the services that they will be getting that are provided in their condominium fees when they purchase that property and part of it is garbage pickup. Uh, now they, they want uh, to put that on the rest of the taxpayers. I do not support it. They have an agreement already. And just to let you know, uh, they're, not all condominium people support this. And I suppose it's good that uh, it can be a pick and choose. But I did get some calls and emails that uh, people were very happy with the way things were. Uh, were according to um, their condominium agreements, they were fine with that. So there are people that, that do not support this who are actually people that own condominiums. 
Thank you, Councillor Wells and Oliver. Quick question, and maybe you know the answer to this, Mr. Chair. If not, probably James does. Do the condominiums pay the same amount of taxes, property tax, based on their assessment as anybody else? Um, uh, I, I can answer that, but James is the professional. Uh, through you, Mr. Mayor, yes, they are assessed at RT or residential taxes. Can't continue. So then it would seem to me if we continually <coughs> say that we are taking money from the regular taxpayer to pay for them, that's not true. They're paying for their own and not getting the service, which is exactly what you said last week. Thank you. Councillor Oliver, thank you. Mr. Mayor, we did have a really good discussion about this last week and eventually arrived at a conclusion that at least implements some action. And, and I supported that, and I still do. It's interesting, Councillor Black made reference to having spoken with a couple of condo owners over the past few days and that they're happy with the status quo that their group has. And I, too, had that experience over the weekend, coincidentally, a couple of ladies from a condo uh, association in Simcoe, and they said, basically, thanks but no thanks. We're, we're quite happy. We're not paying too much, in our opinion, to get the service we have now privately, and they're not going to change. So this won't apply to everybody. It'll only apply to those condos, associations that ask us and that meet the criteria. So it, it is something we should support as a council. Thank you, Councillor Brunton. Thank you, Mayor Luke. Uh, I apologize I didn't take part or I wasn't here for the discussion last week. I only have one question. Do all condominium owners have the ability or option to have their garbage picked up? Can somebody answer I, that question? Are you say if I can for the clarification, are you saying if this motion passes, would all condominium corporations have the ability to have their garbage picked up? Is that well, what you're saying? They have the option to have it look, looked at. I mean, I, I assume it's fair for all condominiums, whatever options we've chosen. Well, if you recall, uh, option 3A and 4, I believe, yeah. would be two options. One would be 4 would be that they could opt to pick it up if they take it out to the sure. county uh, the county property curb, okay. which is usually outside of the corporation. And option 3A is that they would be picked up uh, at their driveways in the condominium. In other words, the truck is able to get in, and that would be determined through an application with our staff to determine what we could do and not do. Lee, do you want to just verify that, I, that I've interpreted that correctly? Uh, certainly, through the mayor to council. Um, what the mayor has indicated is correct, but I'm going to take it one step further. There are condominium corporations in Norfolk County that would not be able to avail themselves of option four, which is to place the material at the curbside or the municipal curbside. So take it outside of the condominium corporation, out to the municipal road, because there's insufficient property in that area to be able to place the material. And to further answer Councillor Brutton's question, this does not allow, um, I'm going to say for lack of a better phrase, high-rise condominium corporations or cop condominium corporations that are like um, an apartment building. They would not, right now they're having their bins collected. That would not, we would not be able to pick that up either. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Further discussion on the motion? A request of a court of vote. Okay, so <clears throat> you, I have read the uh, the motion here, uh, number 16. It has been moved and seconded. So I'll have the clerk uh, do the recorded vote. Mr. Clerk? Councillor Height? Yes. Councillor Geisens? No. Councillor Columbus? Yes. Councillor Oliver? Yes. Councillor Sonnenberg? No. Councillor Wells? Yes. Councillor Black? No. Councillor Brunton? Mayor Luke. Yes. Uh, it passes five to four. Thank you. Motion is carried. Thank you very much. <clears throat> five, ten minutes, and I'll get you. We'll get back at these last two reports. Thank you.
We know you can't go wrong with the friendly folk of Norfolk. You won't be a stranger long. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road and found to be back for more. Of Norfolk, Norfolk, my Cullen County home. With hard work, we built a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals, too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. Build a dream that only willing hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals, too. Eerie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dog woods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. Stranger love.
of sandy soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, South Coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road. strip of sandy soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love it here and are proud to call it our own. No. Take in the small town atmosphere, be amazed at all that we grow. Like our kids that go and see the world and can't wait to return home. Drop a line in a placid lake or stroll along the shore. Take a tour on a peaceful country road and found to be back for more. Oh, no. With hard work, we built a dream that only will in hands could do. It's on display at our fall fairs and at all the festivals too. Erie beaches, Carolinian forests, where the flower and dogwoods bloom. Patchwork fields and rolling hills, it's just the place for you. soil lies a county called Norfolk. It's Ontario, south coast, you know, and it's surely not remote. If you pass through or spend a day or decide to call it home, you'll see why we love or, it here. Um, it doesn't mean that we've sucked it dry. It means that we're, um, that the well is working at maximum capacity yeah. and we're drawing down our storage faster. Right. And if we didn't have that storage, we would have had zero water available. Yeah, I, I knew we didn't suck it down, but 
Yep. <laughs> Maybe that, that, has, that makes people pay attention when you say that. But, but yes. that is still pretty unusual, is it not? For it, us? It, yeah. it is highly unusual. Um, some of this stuff has to do with um, some of the other testing and other things that we were doing, trying to max out the capacity right. of things to, and to see about the effects that it has on the new wells that we're looking at doing in Delhi. Yeah. Thank you. Any further uh, questions? Been moved by Councillor Columbus and seconded by Councillor Height that staff report PW 1727 2016 drinking water summary report be received as information in discussion. Those in favor? I'm sorry, I got to do it again. Those in favor? Okay, thank you. That's carried. No, no one opposed. <clears throat> I would ask you to please turn to page 42. I would like to deal with staff report. FS 1714, this is approval of attendance at out-of-province staff development and training. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Finance has prepared and submitted the out-of-province staff development report on behalf of all SLT. Uh, during the review of the proposed 2017 tax-supported operating budget, a resolution was passed that no out-of-province conferences, training, or seminars be undertaken without the approval of Council. SLT felt that it would be appropriate to provide one list for all planned out of province staff development and training rather than each general manager providing a separate report for each of their staff's planned attendance at these events. This report provides a list of the planned out of province development for all of Norfolk County's departments. Staff requests that council approves uh, the staff attendance at out of province development and training as outlined in report FS 1714. If there are any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask myself or the related department's general manager. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, you have the report for you. And there's uh, three or four requests here that's open for discussion. Councillor Wells. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor, under uh, development and cultural services, it says $1,500 in total for all attendees. Do we know how many attendees are going? Uh, oh, James, do you know? Uh, yes, through the mayor. Uh, it's, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I thought usually in those charts we had the number of uh, employees, but this one seems a little bit more generic. Right? Yeah, I believe uh, Pam just whispered that it's a maximum of six for this tour. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, and, and I'm not sure, James, do you know on that one too? I think the Southwestern Ontario Tourism uh, I think they they have a large sponsorship in that. I'm going back to when I attended the uh, Finger Lakes two years ago. I know there was a strong present there, and a lot of or some of the expenses were certainly picked up. But uh, okay. Further questions, Councillor Columbus? Yes, with respect to some of these, do we know if these same individuals had traveled out of province the previous year to a conference? For example, the first one, the community services. Um, as an example through the chair in that particular uh, case no this this individual has has not traveled in the previous year and what about the graphic designer at the bottom of that page <coughs> through you mr. mayor uh, I'm not a hundred percent sure but I believe that's an annual thing that 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 per, that position normally goes to and it's out of province, generally? Correct. I see. Okay, that's all I've got, thanks. Councillor Height. Thank you, Mayor Luca. Uh, the two that Councillor Columbus touched on, too, I, I don't know that they're necessary. The World Conference on Drowning for a Lifeguard in Norfolk County. Yeah, I'm not gonna go with that one. And the Montreal Graphic Designer Summit. I'm hoping at this point, graphics designers know how to do their jobs. And either one of those, I don't feel that they should be approved. So if I have to make an amendment. Um, you want to make amendment to the recommendation in the report? It's to have those two removed. Oh, well, uh, if, if you just give me a second. Um, I, I think you need a motion to put an amendment in. We don't, do not have a mover seconder, so maybe you want to just add to the, make the motion yourself and I can. Well, you don't have a, nobody signed off on the sheet? No, sir. Oh, okay. Uh, uh, no, and, and you wouldn't have known that, so my apologies. But what I'm saying is, if you want to add something to this or wait till it is a motion, then you can amend it. I'll it make doesn't, a motion. 
Pardon? I'll make the motion. Fire away. Uh, basically, what we have there with the removal of those two, the World Conference on Drowning and the Montreal Graphic Designer Summit. So I will um, I put on here with the re, um, that we approve uh, staff attendance uh, uh, with the removal of the I think you said the drowning conference and the graphic designer conference. Yeah, Correct. That, yeah, that's total savings of thirty six hundred and ninety dollars. Councillor Height is putting forward the motion that uh, we receive this report as information and that we approve staff attendance at out of province development training as outlined in this report uh, and that we further remove the drowning conference, uh, further, uh, further not approve the drowning conference and the graphic design conference. I'll need a seconder for that. Councillor Brunton, no? Yeah, well, we'll get to that. I um, had a motion put forward. Councilor Wells? Okay. Yeah, seconded. Okay, so, Councilor Brunton, uh, we're going to speak to the motion, and certainly a question is uh, certainly in order. So fire away. Well, I find it interesting. We get this report, and it seems to me last year, we asked for a report on conferences, training, and seminars. This is a... Uh, I use the word an excellent report. It gives me the detail, the cost, who's going where. And, you know, we, we sh went through all last year trying to get this information. I realize this is only out of province, but why can't we get this for the rest of the stuff that we want in province or in town, wherever it's taking place? And, and then we can decide on all this stuff. How many of these people are going to other conferences besides this one? You know, that's the kind of information we need to make decisions. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you. Okay, and I will just answer and say to you, this report was a specific motion of council at budget time to deal with council having the approval for out of council. And Councillor Brown, I'm not suggesting that we can't go further. But at this point, this is, staff has delivered what we've asked them to bring forward. And that is to deal with out of province conferences that instead of upper level of uh, administration approving them, that council approves them. So further uh, questions or comments? Councillor Columbus, to the uh, motion, please. Yes, were, were these uh, numbers in, the, in, the, in our budget that we approved? Uh, through the mayor, yes, these are all so they, they passed, yes. So they approved the budget, okay, thanks. Okay, Councillor Oliver. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A question along the same line. I recall when this first came up, I believe the county manager, and I'm not putting Mr. Cridlin on the spot, but I, am I correct in assuming that these would have been approved by Mr. Robichaud probably before they went in the budget, if you like? In other words, he, he would have vetted them or an acting county manager on, on his behalf. You know it all. Through, through the chair, I, I would say um, with the reduction to training budgets that staff had went back and, and had canceled some training and then and these, these are in the budget um, because there was no approval by the county manager for out of town province at or travel at that time. When it came to coming out, he would sign, but none of these have, have gone ahead for approval yet. There was, there was no approval. Okay, Mr. Mayor. Then in other words, and that, and that would be typical, that a, an out of province conference could get, in, get its way into the budget before it's approved by the county manager. I just thought, Mr. Mayor, that that our policy was that out of province travel was approved by the county manager. But maybe I'm wrong about that. I'm seeing a head nod over there. That, so somebody would have approved them or would approve them before they actually go is my question. Through the chair, yes, they would be approved before, before they went. But um, so these, um, not to confuse things, these weren't approved right. at this point. Okay, thank, okay. You. thank you. Anything further? Motion to approve three of them and that the drowning and the graphic designer conference not be approved. No more discussion. I'll call the question. Those in favor of this motion? One, two, three, four, five. Those opposed? One, two, three. That is 
Carried. Thank you. Uh, we still have a few moments, so I would suggest now we go to item 4C, which is a special event request. Councillor Wells, I believe you uh, would like to see that brought forward at this time. Uh, I think we've got time. So we'll go to page 32. Just back a few pages. Special event, South Coast Jazz. And I would uh, ask... Shelly, you're still here. Thank you. It's Thank been a long night for you. Thank you for being here for this. Go ahead, Thank please. You. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The purpose of this report is to provide Council with a preliminary overview of the event and seek permission to use municipal property identified in the report. Well, South Coast Jazz is not a new event to Norfolk County, the scope of the event has changed to include celebrations in five downtown areas within Norfolk County, including Port Dover, Simcoe, Delhi, Port Rowan, and Waterford, along with their existing plans at the Port Dover Community Centre. The event is scheduled to run from Friday, August 18th to Sunday, August 20th. Each of the closure areas will feature live music, a licensed bar area, and food vendors. Some of the proposed locations are dependent on what funding is received by the organizer. However, the event organizer is very anxious to secure closures and use of municipal property so that artist and vendor contracts can be completed and promotions and ticket sales started. And with that, I'm going to leave uh, the report discussion to any questions uh, from Council. Thank you very much. Questions? Councillor Columbus first. Yes, there was talk about uh, a bar, I guess, on some of these places. Is these, this a non-profit thing, or is there profit to be made, and who makes the profit? Uh, through the, uh, uh, the mayor, I believe that there is a non-profit component to this organization and a profit or, uh, making. So someone would be making some dollars up, so somewhat private, yeah. Okay, and uh, do you know if the BIAs were contacted or the Trades of Commerce? Uh, Board of Trade. Board of Trade. I know the BIA in Delhi was not contacted about it. Through they the, just sent me a text tonight. Through the mayor, that's a very good question, Councillor Columbus. Um, we have not met as a special event committee to review this application. Um, we will be meeting in May once funding has been secured. Um, at that time, we do reach out to the Board of Trade and the BIA. However, uh, with uh, the anxiousness of the uh, applicant, um, we did indicate she had to reach out to the surrounding businesses. I can't confirm whether or not she talked to BIAs or the Board of Trade at this point. Thank you. Councillor Wells. And, uh, and yeah, Councillor Wells, go ahead. Well, if you'd like, I could uh, make, uh, put this motion forth. Yes. And then I want to speak to the motion. Yes. Because I want to delete part of the motion. And that's in order. If you wish to go ahead, you're on your feet. Okay. Uh, basically, I like to be able to support community initiatives, but this one causes problems for me. It, they have chosen the same date as the Port Dover Summer Festival, and that event has been going on for 47 years. And I sure don't want to get in a, a challenging event between the two. So, and the... the uh, Port, Port Dover Board of Trade, they use the Elmer Lewis Barquette, as well as they block traffic on Main Street, and that's for one block, and they at least use the Elmer Lewis Parquet as well, and part of the parking lot. And the challenge that we have on that weekend, Mr. Mayor, is it's one of the busiest weeks we have in Port Dover, and to block traffic is one thing, but to not give any parking spaces is another. And so they wanted to use the Elmer uh, the uh, the uh, parking lot on 52 Harbor Street, which again, during the summertime, is used by a great number of people to park. So reluctantly, I will support them having their uh, event down at the uh, uh, Harbor Street and the gravel parking lot. That would be for that event. But the other event uptown would be for the Port Dover uh, Board of Trade, and they are coming in. It just prompted them, and I've spoken to them last night. They will be here to put their application in. So if we can split it, at least I still have the same problem. I have no parking in Dover, but at least we'll have two different organizations helping me with the flack. Councillor Wells, while you're on your feet, if you look at the recommendation on page 32, there is to receive his information, then there are three paragraphs. 
I'm taking it that you would like to move that recommendation, but remove paragraph one. And that council approves it. Uh, yes, yes, I would. And you're okay with 52 Harbor Street, Port Dover, yes. and also Port Rowan Park at? Yep. So that is your motion. Uh, I will ask for a seconder, then we can certainly debate this. Councillor Sonnenberg? Okay, the motion is Wells and Sonnenberg, and it's on the floor, but it is taking out the first paragraph, which involves the uh, <clears throat> Elmer uh, Lewis uh, Parkette and the uh, parking lot there at Main Street and behind it. Councillor Brunton to the motion. Your Worship, can I... I'm speaking to the report and, and the whole motion, I guess, in the report, because okay. page 34 in the agenda, fourth paragraph down, staff understands that some of the proposed locations are dependent on what funding is received by the organization. However, the event organizer wants to secure everything. I think this was the lady that was in a while ago and said she needs 100 volunteers and she's asking for some phenomenal amount of money, if I remember right. And I find this thing to be a little overboard in terms of all these closures, and I wish her the best, but, you know, we're... Let me ask Shelley this question. If we, what if she doesn't get her funding or get all these volunteers that... There's a lot of, there's a lot of streets and a lot of, I would assume, a lot of people have to be involved. Uh, through the mayor, thank you for the question, Councillor Brunton. That was part of the concern with staff bringing forward this report as early as we did. I understand the need for the event organizer to place a hold on those locations. However, she's not going to receive her uh, confirmation of funding until May. So as staff, we didn't want to bring forward all of the road closures in the bylaw because they could be subject to change. So in principle, she's looking at these road closures. Staff will be bringing forward another report to council once plans have been finalized, but certainly with the direction from Councillor Wells, it can at least give us some direction to the event organizer that that particular location on Main Street will not work with another event happening that weekend. And as I said, we'll see where we get to in May uh, for the uh, defined uh, road closures associated with the various events happening. Do you know if she spoke to the Simcoe BIA? Uh, through the mayor, I am not certain she spoke to the, the BIA. <coughs> Again, that would be uh, an invitation that we would include at our special event committee meeting in May. We would engage the <coughs> BIAs from all the respective areas. Thank you. Mayor Height, please. Thank you, Mayor Luke. So I'm glad Port Rowan doesn't have all those problems that Port Dover has. And as a matter of fact, if you could uh, <laughs> turn to the map of Port Rowan... If I can get staff to go there for a minute, the, there might be a slight problem there in that her licensed area is actually not municipality owned property, I don't believe. I believe that's private property. Through the, through the mayor, I've, I've made an assumption that staff did check that uh, ownership, but I will take that feedback and we'll check that out tomorrow. Okay, because it might be better down at the Lions Park. I know that's where they have their bands and things like that. There is no parking up right at that parquet. Okay, we'll investigate that. Thank you. Anything further? I'm going to call the question. There may be more coming back. Those in favor? Those opposed? It's scary. I have just enough time to do the confirming, uh, sorry, before the confirming bylaw to do the bylaws. And this uh, motion has been adjusted by our clerk and Andy, you can confirm that bylaw 2OP 2017 and 3OP 2017, which are the pre-consultation bylaws, have been removed from this bylaw. Uh, as well as uh, 15Z. As well as what? Uh, 15Z that was related to the... Um, oh yes, I see it. 15Z 2017. Got it. Moved by Councillor Geisen, seconded by Councillor Sonnenberg that bylaws 16Z 2017 and 2017-27 through 2017-36 inclusive be approved. Signed by the Mayor and Clerk and affixed with the corporate seal. Discussion? Those in favor? Carried.